One of the interesting things is seeing how human medicine is applying to veterinary medicine and the technology is constantly changing. One of the tools that's used uh, increasingly in human uh, cancer treatment is something called the cyber knife. And uh, Dr. Ettinger, you know a little bit about that because you're using that in veterinary medicine at your hospital in New York. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the cyber knife is a type of unit um, for a type of treatment called radio surgery, which is a little bit of a confusing name for most people because there's no surgery involved. But actually, we're using the radiation beam in place of surgery. And one of the big requirements for a dog um, to, or a cat to be treated with um, cyber knife radio surgery is that they actually have measurable tumor. So it's not going to be good for your dog if they have a surgical scar that was determined to have incomplete margins or tumor cells left at the surgical scar. And in general, we're using it for non-surgical cancers. The number one um, type of tumor that we're treating is brain surgery. So you can imagine a lot of dogs with brain cancer, they're in parts of the brain that are not very accessible um, and they have a measurable tumor in that area. The second most common type of tumor that we're treating with the radio surgery with the cyber knife unit is nasal cancers. Um, we've treated over about 250 dogs to date. We've been um, treating dogs for about three years here. Um, and, and, we, you're, and you're one of the only places in America where you're using a cyber knife on animals, right? Yeah, I think we. Um, there may be another place that's using one. Um, Colorado State University has a different type of radio surgery unit, um, but I, there may be one or one other place out there at this point. But when we first opened, we were the first place to be using cyber knife radio surgery. So this for is dogs. still pretty cutting edge. This is very so, cutting edge. Okay. Uh, sort of speak, pun intended. Um, so, so which cancers again are the best candidates for CyberKnife? Um, I'd have to say that hands down, um, brain cancer, um, CyberKnife is the treatment of choice for brain cancer. Um, for these non-surgical brain cancer patients, um, the advantage of CyberKnife is that we can treat um, their tumors in one to three treatments. If it's three treatments, it's done in consec on consecutive days. The alternative is fifteen to twenty treatments. Um, um, with daily anesthesia, which is required uh, for dogs for um, for radiation therapy. So, um, and again, one of the other differences besides the um, decreased number of treatments, again, one to three, decreased number of anesthesias, decreased number of trips to the hospital, is also we're getting less side effects. And the main difference with CyberKnife radio surgery and conventional or traditional radiation therapy is our type of radiation is very conforming to the type of the tumor. And so we treat within sub-millimeter accuracy around the tumor and we do not um, Me meaning include... Meaning very, very small, very precise. Very precise treatment. And the we get very little side effects um, from our treatment because we're not treating much of the normal tissue, if any, that is just around the tumor. And again, that's the huge difference between conventional radiation um, and the CyberKnife radio surgery. Dr. Dressler, what do you think, you know, uh, you're, you're in Hawaii, obviously there are no cyber knives in, in Hawaii. What do you think about the, this leading edge uh, technology that's being moved from humans to dogs? Well, I think it's great. I honestly believe that this is a prime example of getting rid of our biases. Uh, I, I have always advocated something I call full spectrum care. And by full spectrum care, what we're talking about is using any tool that can benefit our dogs. And for us to be able to use any tool that can benefit our dogs, regardless of the color of the wrapping paper that it's being delivered in, we need to get rid of our own biases. And we see bias happening a lot in many different camps, say in, uh, in conventional veterinary care. I come from a conventional veterinary care background. I'm a trained conventional veterinarian, graduated from Cornell University, and uh, I learned conventional veterinary care, and I practice conventional Bo veterinary both care. Both of you guys graduated from Cornell. That's right, Sue and I went to school together. We did. Um, and <laughs> it's a funny story, but anyway, back, back, <laughs> back to what we're, uh, what we're talking about. The important thing for, say, a conventional veterinarian is to say, okay, here we have a, a circumstance, say a brain tumor or a nasal tumor or something like that, where we don't have a lot of very successful options. Right? What we're dealing with in terms of success rates and increase in survival times, it's not really all that great. 
you know, for, for most guardians and frankly, for most veterinarians also. So we need to search for other sources of information so that we can do better. We can do a better job. And the cyber knife is, is an example of this. You know, then it, the, for example, there may be veterinarians out there who would c call themselves a holistic or an alternative veterinarian or something like that. And they've got bias there where they may say, okay, we don't want to use antibiotics. We don't want to use this tool. And you as a guardian may lose access to something that may benefit your dog. Just like a conventional veterinarian may say, hey, I'm not gonna use acupuncture. Well, meanwhile, in places like the Mayo Clinic, which are huge cancer treatment centers for people, they built acupuncture in is now standard of care. That's part of, of uh, proper treatment for, for cancer. So we need to avoid these biases when we're contemplating high-tech advances in the conventional front, such as the cyber knife, which by the way is very cool. I was out in New York recently, went up to Yonkers, uh, went up to the animal specialty center, saw the cyber knife. The thing is is amazing, um, and and for the right case and the right guardian and the right type of cancer, the cyber knife would be something that should be considered. Yeah, and I mean we've actually treated dogs from Canada. We've treated dogs from um, a couple of weeks ago. We had do uh, some guardians drive in with their dog um, from Chicago, Virginia, Florida. So you know, and one of the nice things because it's so few treatments is that a lot of people will come into town for a week, um, and we get the treatment done for them. And so it's nice, you know, if they can travel, a lot of people will drive on in um, after giving us a call and making sure, obviously, that you know it's the right case um, for CyberKnife. If it's the right case, what's an average ballpark figure to, for a cyber knife treatment? The cyber knife, including all of the imaging, we have to do uh, CT scans beforehand, even if they've been done, just because we have to do some markers for our machine for the planning. Um, but in general, somewhere between $7,500 and um, $8,000 for the treatment. And that includes all the imaging, all the anesthesias. Okay, great. Dr. Edinger, New York, Dr. Dressler in Hawaii, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.